Oh my gosh. I meant to post a, a message all day, all day long. I've been meaning to come on here and, and just kind of celebrate um, that Crystal and I have been doing this ER Shred lifestyle now for a full year, which is so crazy because when I came alive, it was about my birthday, um, which was about July 10th. Uh, and what's funny about that is at that time, I really hoped that I was going to be one of those people who, you know, kind of defies the odds. You know, everybody says your life will go downhill and, and, uh, you know, everything will fall apart and, you know, 40, you know, all these people, they did this video for me and uh, Hey Mel, they did this video for me and, uh, Crystal had everybody record their sentiments about, you know, me turning 40. Uh, that was a year ago. And uh, it was funny because all my friends were like, yeah, buddy, it's all downhill from here. Ha ha ha. You know, like, yeah, buddy, like it's it's pretty much sucks now. But I got to tell you, like my life, it's it's been the opposite. Um, in the last year, oh, my gosh, you probably can see this hat has had so much wear. Can you see the sun fading and the and the stains on the on the white of this thread? Oh man, it's time for a new hat. This is the hat I wear to recreate. I thought, oh, it's black, you know, I won't get it dirty. And I have recreated more in the last year. <laughs> like, you guys, it's so fun. Like today, one of the reasons that I wasn't able to get on live earlier is because you really can become a kid again. Um, you know, I turned 41 in 10 days here. Uh, you can become a kid again. So. I actually play a lot with my kids now. Um, I know what it feels like to have that dad body. And I know what it feels like to, to kind of like, to feel like you're going to pay a price. I know what it feels like actually to go play the turkey bowl. And, uh, you know, you're like in your thirties and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go play. Well, in your twenties, in your twenties, you think you can still play tackle. And when you start hitting about 30, it's like, oh, Buddy, like, why are you playing tackle football? And then when you hit those mid to late 30s, I know what it feels like to even play flag. And you go play, and man, you feel that. Hey, Heather. Hey, Heather there. Thanks for joining. You feel that for what, like a week? I remember Crystal started telling me it was probably from my mid 30s on, she was pretty opposed to me going to play pickup basketball going to play flag football. She's like, man, I don't want to hear you complain about that for a week. I don't want to see you laying around all sore. But that was my, that was my reality is that my body was different. Um, it was so different and uh, it's kind of mind boggling for me. My mind was different. Everything was different. My thought processes, my emotions, uh, you know, my creativity, Everything is so night and day, but I can relate if, if I'm being fair, like I can totally relate to what it feels like to be like, no oh, man, I'm 30, I'm 33, I'm 35 and then 40. And it's like, my body's not healing. I mean, part of the reason I could never get in the best shape I, I hoped for, even though I would try, I mean, I always wanted to be in great shape because I love fitness. I've always loved fitness and I've always loved nutrition, but I would try and it just wasn't happening for me. And then, you know, couple that with the kids and, and just all, everything around that, it was just tough. And so now the cool thing is, yeah, my time is still very much sucked up by my children, but I can really, I can perform. Um, Jesse talks about how not everybody has to be like a professional athlete in order to be, you know, inspired or um, motivated by performance. Like you should be motivated by your performance, even if you're playing with those kids or, you know, even if you have a certain job, no matter what it is, you should be motivated by performance. What's up, Tasha? Oh my gosh, it's so fun to see you guys on here. Uh, so for me, ER Shred, what, what is it uh, on our one year anniversary? Um, what is it about ER Shred that's so meaningful to me? And I would probably, I'm gonna have to go back and read all these beautiful comments, you guys, because 
if I start reading them now, it's just going to steer my train of thought. But I will go back and read them. Thank you. If I was to think about, like, what is it? What am I so grateful for in the last year um, around ER Shred? Uh, what, what am I so happy about? What am I so grateful for? Well, I would say the word that comes to mind for me is the word authentic. It really is because I used to worry a lot about what people thought of me. I used to worry a lot about what people, the way I looked. Um, as you can tell now, I really don't care because I just, I just love being me. I love Sean and that's exciting because I can see now that for a lot of years, and I think people tell you this, you know, when you hit the, the certain age, you start to realize like, nobody really cares about you that much. Stop caring about so much about what they think. Nobody really cares about you that much. Um, nobody really cares what you're wearing that much. And if they do, shame on them because that's, that's their stuff. Nobody really cares so much about how you talk. And if they do, shame on them. That's not their place. That's not where they should be. Um, and it's the same thing with what you believe. And it's the same thing with everything. And you know what, guys? I woke up today and I was hoping that, you know, all these wonderful, inspiring thoughts would come to me. And you know what? I op I pulled up my iPhone and I was just going to check the news. I usually check some sports really quick just to see if there's anything I missed. I'm cheering for the Phoenix Suns this year because my mom, my grandma was a huge Phoenix Suns fan. And I, I actually am a big Chris Paul fan. I think he's pretty awesome. So anyway, I checked the ESPN and you know, what did I see? This Cy Young pitcher, uh, the best pitcher, I guess, for the year is accused of sexually abusing this this woman and it's bad it stinks and and it's unfortunate and you know then i i go to other news media just to brush up on a couple things and it's like no i didn't even do that that's that's not what i did actually that's not what i do i got a, a message from someone on facebook they sent me a message and it was all about this conspiracy theories around you know the virus and conspiracy theories around um, sex trafficking and, and, uh, and there was this guy and he was just, you know, putting out all this garbage. And what did he say? He says, he's saying he's doing it in the name of Jesus. And then in the same breath as he's saying that he's, you know, protecting all these, uh, child trafficking and, you know, America, he's trying to save America in the same breath. He's, he's selling nutritional products for COVID-19. He actually is telling people that he can cure COVID-19 and prevent it. And I just thought, oh, gross. It's just so gross. I hate that. I hate that people do stuff like that. It's so disgusting and foul. And uh, then I moved on to the next thing and it was like this... Uh, Anyway, I'm not even going to go there with all this stuff, but it was like, I told Crystal this morning, I was like five different things. And I just thought, ew, this world can be so gross. And I'm not afraid to live in this world. I'm really not. That's not where I'm coming from. I'm not like doom and gloom, like, oh no, you know, we're living in this crazy world. And oh my God, like, what are we going to do for our kids? I'm not like that. It's just... This is what people are consuming all day, every day. And it's not healthy. It's not well. So for me, in the last year, the ER shred has been positivity for me. And gratitude. That's really what it's been for me, personally. It's been a journey of positivity. Learning that, you know, <laughs> I'm actually a pretty happy dude. And, you know, it's all these exterior you know, peripheral things that really do affect us. And we got to hold that sacred. We've got to start really, really, <laughs> hey, Joni, we got to start cherishing. Uh, and I stopped watching the news as well, Joni, for that very reason. We have got to start cherishing our <laughs> sanity. We've got to start really, really appreciating uh, what we can control. And we've got to start living in our own little bubble. I have gone less places this last year than ever before. I have spent, probably I have spent less money 
just by, you know, by virtue of the fact that we're not going all over the place, we're not, you know, going to restaurants, we're, we're, we've learned a lot in the last year. Um, we have simplified. And you know what, if you're, a, if you're aware of our impact on the world, human beings, I didn't choose it, neither did you. But, you know, once you become aware of the impact that we're having on the world, you also will probably start to feel called to towards more simplicity. You'll be called to live with less. Not that you can't achieve more, not that you can't earn more or, you know, be more, but you'll want less things. And to me, ER Shred, what it's done for us, it's like I always say, the diet is the common denominator. The diet what you eat every single day. You literally are what you eat. Think about that. Like you've heard it a million times. You are what you eat. You're also what you consume in terms of news, media, information. You are what you eat. Whether it's knowledge, whether it's education, whether it's food. But food has taught us something, hasn't it? Food has really, really taught us something. Um, if you haven't watched it, go watch the documentary called Fat Fiction, and your mind is going to be blown. It will, it will be blown, and I'm not saying that I agree with every single thing that they say in it, and I'm not saying that, that I endorse every single expert that they, I'm not doing that, but the information, it, it is alarming. It is alarming, and it does make sense. I'm a pretty common sense kind of guy. And so when, when the documentary started out, one of the things that it pointed out that made sense to me right away was prior to the low fat movement, <laughs> prior to the, uh, the low fat and the alternative sugar and, you know, the diet this, diet that, prior to that, <laughs> if you go back to the 50s and the 60s, the incidence of obesity was actually very small. And they have... They show pictures of that time and everybody looked lean. Everybody looked lean and everybody, you know, looked healthier. And then they show you as, you know, the American, what would we, what would we call that? Sad American diet, right? Standard American diet, SAD, sad American, it's sad. It is sad, SAD. But um, they started to teach us and what's sad about our culture is it's sad to me how everything is revolving around money. So you've got people who, that it's all about money. It's actually not about your health. And that's unfortunate because if it wasn't just about profit, it's like we always say, follow the money. Follow the money. It'll lead you right to the motive, right? Well, when it comes to money around what? Around hospitals, around pharmaceuticals, around politicians, um, around agriculture, okay? It's all kind of interconnected. And we're starting to realize that, you know, these, these are powerful, powerful and loaded agendas, propaganda. And it's time that you stop listening to so-called experts. I'm sorry to put it that way, but medical doctors spend the majority of their schooling. The reason I know this is because medical doctors, I work with so many of them. And when I talk to medical doctors, guess what some of the things they tell me are? They tell me things like this. If I could go back in time, I would not be a medical doctor. Really? Why? And this is probably the most common thing I hear when I ask them, how do you like being a medical doctor? Nah. Would you do it again? I mean, I ask them because I know the investment that they made in terms of years of, of education and all the hundreds of thousands of dollars and loans and so forth. And I say, do, would you be a medical doctor again? No, it's always no. That's what I've always heard. I mean, sure, they, they wanna say yes because they really do. A lot of them value helping people and they were called to it for that reason. You think they were called to it for the money, but a lot of these people are very beautiful people and they really do wanna help people. But they say, no, well, why wouldn't you want to want to be a medical doctor again? Huh. All the malpractice insurance and all that garbage. And it takes the, the, the fun right out of it for them. It's just 
a brutal headache. They could have the best of intentions. They could be get, doing everything they know how to help someone and they could get sued just because something didn't go right. They didn't intend for that to happen, so that's a sad deal. But another thing they'll tell you most often, most of them, is that the majority of their schooling around their uh, profession is geared towards what? It's actually geared towards prescribing medicines. Diagnosing and prescribing. Diagnosing and prescribing. And guess what? Most of them, believe it or not, don't know much about nutrition at all. Most. And there are some that really, you know, they take that very serious. They pride themselves on it. And, and I really got to hand it to them. But most of them, all they know is how to prescribe and how to diagnose. And that's sad because that is not the ultimate goal around health. And I don't know why we call it health care. It should be called disease care. I'm telling you that in the last year, I have had an awakening. I've had a full-blown awakening. Warren knows what I'm talking about. So does Bradley. These guys, Heather, Rike, uh, Joni, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say I have had a full-blown awakening. I have had a full-blown... You know, my son has a condition where he, he was born with this little ear. I think it's one in every 4,000 babies today, probably because of the environment we live in, probably because of all the toxicity and the synthetics. It's unfortunate, but about one in every 4,000 babies is born with a a thing called microtia, which is a underdeveloped ear, one or two. And my son also has a closed off ear canal. He can only hear out of one ear. The interesting thing about that is he's, it's like he's gifted in other ways. Like he's amazing with his hand-eye coordination and um, all his motor skills. But when it comes to being able to locate sounds, he struggles. And so he, it, you can see it actually really, really frustrates him. It makes him angry because you'll say, Dad, Dad, where are you? And I'll say, over here, Owen. And over here doesn't help him because when you have one ear, I think they call it bilateral, when one ear hears and the other doesn't, you can't, there's no depth. You don't know where it's coming from. And so, you know, this one time, my son actually got an ear infection in his normal ear. And he went completely deaf. And I want to say it was for probably about 10 days and it was really, really hard for Crystal and I. Um, it was just a hard thing. And it made us really start to relate to people who have, um, you know, a deaf child or a blind child or what have you. It, you really start to realize like that's a whole new reality. Well, I remember he was so frustrated that he couldn't hear. He was so upset. I've seen videos of children that couldn't hear and the inner ear was was still intact they do these bone conductivity tests they can tell whether or not you can conduct noise within the bone of the ear and I've actually seen videos go on YouTube and watch it if you want to be inspired and if you want to have a, some happy tears and it's people uh, who were completely deaf and it shows them as they put on these bone conductor uh, hearing aids. And all of a sudden they can hear. And you can see the joy. You can see the gratitude. Um, you can see the, the, just the awe as they hear their mother for the first time or their father for the first time. It's so freaking awesome. And this is... Hmm... That's how I feel about ER Shred. I feel like I didn't know what it was like to feel good in the gut, in my head, looking at my body, all the ups and downs. Like I didn't know that it could actually happen and it could happen naturally and it could happen without forcing it or willing it. It, it can happen. And when I realized that, I, I actually started crying. I started crying because I thought, N I haven't felt this good. I don't even know what it's like to feel this good. And I remember 
just thinking, I'll never let this go. That was a year ago. I thought, I will never let this go. The feeling, never again. You can't, you can't take it from me. And I, I have to tell you, like, do I have stressors just like everybody else? You, I've got a 15 year old daughter. <laughs> I've got four children. <laughs> you know, I've got stressors just like everybody else. But I think, I remember saying to Crystal, we have to help people. We have to help people with this. And we've been so misperceived. Oh my God, I love Jesse's post that he put out yesterday where he's flipping everybody off because he's right. Like people still don't understand what we are. But I will tell you what we are. ER Shred is a lifestyle empowerment protocol that gives you back power. That's all it is. It gives you back power that you didn't know you'd lost. In fact, you probably never had it. Control, freedom, power, control, and freedom. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I've been in the nutrition space around it my entire life. And I've never seen anything. Yeah, I've seen people lose lots of weight, but that's not what we're excited about. Are we excited about that? Yeah, because that's indicative of good health, sure. If it's done in a healthy way. But I'll tell you what I'm excited about. This lady, I'll give you an example. This lady in our group, uh, you can get there by going to ershredders.com. I woke up this morning and one of the more positive things that I read that put me in the right space was this beautiful lady. And she said, I don't remember her name, but she said that for the first time, she was able to walk all the way across this shopping mall with her grandson, and she didn't have to stop. And her grandson kept looking at her saying, uh, 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 Grandma, do, do you need to take a break? Do, do, here, let's sit down. And she was like, no, I'm good, I'm great. And she walked all the way there, I believe, and then she walked all the way back, and she said she, she just feels so good. And she could just keep going. And I, I, to me, it's so much about the feels, like, <laughs> it's just the feels. I mean, that's really what it's all about. I always thought, like, what, where is my natural self? You know, is it in there? Like, because I don't even know what I am or who I am anymore. Like, who am I? And then all of a sudden, you, you get to a natural state, you start feeling right. You start feeling well. Your, your natural self that everybody loves, not everybody, not everybody loves me, but the, the natural you that, you know, your like kind will appreciate, it'll start coming out. And you can't stop it. We've seen that with so many of our ER shredders. It just starts to pour out of them. It's just like... Oh my God. And it's such a beautiful thing. I mean, it's the coolest thing. I, I love it. I mean, it's, it's highly addictive for me to see these people come alive and to know that we're not just, we're not just helping them, uh, get well physically, but there's something else that's happening. Not even, I'm not even going to say mentally, emotionally. There's something that's happening with... <laughs> Some people refer to it as a conscience. Um, some people, they refer to it as your higher self. Uh, there's something that happens when you're able to get to that baseline and, and you're able to, you know, get all that crappy stuff out of the body and, and you're able to start getting off all those culprit things and, and you don't want them anymore. There's something that happens where you didn't know that your body has a language and your body will speak to you. It will. And people start to realize that their body speaks. And if they'll listen, their body is the most, it's far more powerful than any doctor. It's far more powerful than any author. It's far more powerful than, than any presenter or, or uh, anything, okay? any certification your body's a miracle but you don't know how to listen to it and when you learn to listen to it that's where power is born
that's where you start to realize that, whoa, this is, this is a little creepy crazy because this is starting to manifest in all other areas of my life, which it is a little freaky, I'll, I'll admit. It's a little creepy. It's a little creepy because it's like, wait a minute, I didn't know that I could be my own guru. I didn't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're taught to glorify everyone else all the time. We're taught to, you know, constantly, you know, look to others for our information and for our validation. And it's like, trust yourself. And, and it, I, Jesse always calls it the tracks to run on. And the tracks to run on are what teach you how to listen to yourself. I have never seen that before. I've never seen it ever. I'm 41 years old in, a, in about, you know, 10 days here. My father has been in the nutrition industry my entire life, and we've never seen anything like it. He'd tell you the same thing. It's a little creepy, but it's good. It's really, really good. And uh, I will say this, because I don't believe in setting people up for disappointment. Failure is part of the process. You're going to have to fail. And by failing, you will learn to recalibrate and, and adjust your aim. Failure's part of the deal. Plus, we're human. We're not robots. Um, but when you get to that, that place, when you turn into an ER shredder, and you get to that place of empowerment, you realize that, oh my God, didn't think I could feel this good, not ever. Didn't think it was possible. That's, that's where it's, the magic is. Um, that will stay with you. That will continue to empower you. You'll be able to keep, continue to draw on that. I'm gonna issue another challenge. That is, who learns more than the teacher? It's true that the person who prepares the lesson and the person who shares the information learns far more than the participants. If you really, really want your ER shred result to, to be concrete, if you really wanna be empowered for life, um, believe it or not, one of the most powerful things you can do is teach others. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because, it's act, believe it or not, um, human beings, we need each other. I need you. This community has created a healthy accountability for me. I got off beer. I got off Coke, zero. I got off all those sour gummies I used to eat every day. And I thought I was healthy. And I would tell people, I eat, I eat. My, my stupid quote that I always said that I'm really embarrassed by was, I eat healthier than 90% of people. And that, that's so stupid. Like, why would I think that? I got off, God, I got off everything. I got off everything. I haven't had anything bad in a year. I haven't had anything bad. I know for a lot of you that, for one, you could think I'm self-righteous, but I'm not because I want to help you too. It's self-righteous and condescending if I was to say that about myself, like, ah, ha, ha, look at me. I'm so great. I have willpower, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm telling you, I know a code. I, I, the ER shred is, is a combination that unlocks empowerment in your life around the most central thing in your entire life, which is consumption. I know that code, and a lot of you know that code, and you can go share that with others and create a accountability around yourself. Because accountability, when it's done in a positive way, it can be pretty powerful. So that's what we do for each other. Not accountability in terms of, wait, you ate what? Or, you know, wait, like you did what? Oh my God, that's, oh my God, you can't do that. Like accountability that I'm talking about is inspiration. It's not through shame or guilt, it's inspiring. And you guys all inspire me and I really hope that I inspire you. That would be my hope, is that you'll see I'm just an average guy, I'm a normal guy, I'm a down to earth guy, I don't claim to be any kind of intellectual, I don't claim to be anyone special. I really don't think I'm special anymore. I used to think I was, and now I know I'm not. Where I'm not any more special than anyone else. But I, I got a phone call. I love people. And 
if I find something that works, that legitimately works, then I'm going to help people. And guess what? I ain't doing it for money. I'm not doing it for money. And you know what? You network marketing companies out there that think you can just motivate with money all the time, I'm going to, I'm going to actually issue a bold challenge, which is take all your marketing bonuses and all your pool money, put it in the products. Put it all in the products. Make the products in network marketing, which is our industry, that's the industry I'm in, make those products better than anything else on the market without any shadow of a doubt. And the way you can do that is to invest that same money that you put in all these bonuses and all these pools and all this you know, incentivization for marketing and put it in the products and make those products better than anything, anything available anywhere. And I promise you it's the right thing to do and the reward will still be there. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, you're going to, you're going to go and make your $2 billion a year, but who gives a shit? Who cares? Whether you're earning as a, as a company, whether you're earning, you know, 2 billion or 1 billion or 600 million or 400 million or 70, come on, what is it about? I, I really believe in doing the, the right thing and using the best of ingredients and making products that really do serve mankind because it is necessary. And you know what? That's what's so cool about ER Shred is you will start to, uh, you'll start to see through a lot of the bullshit that's out there. A lot of these nutritional companies that claim to be, you know, they claim that they are nutrition companies and really, they're just marketing companies. Just marketing. It's all they want to do is sell stuff. They're not genuinely concerned about human health. So, we are. ER Shred, it's all we care about. And we focus on the mission. Around the opportunity of sharing ER Shred with other people, I want to tell you something. The best example I've ever seen of doing it the right way is my mom and dad. And all they cared about was results. And they always said, we are product result driven, not just product driven, but product result driven and we're people driven. And so if you can make what you do about enriching people's lives, and if you can del deliver on that without hype, without all the BS, without all the smoke and mirrors, if you can deliver a legitimate vi viable result, then you've got something and you can help people. You'll go to bed at night feeling good about what you're doing. You'll wake up in the morning motivated to get going. It's very, very exciting. It's very fun. And I'm so grateful I discovered this because why? I think people actually do go their whole lives without ever discovering something that fulfills them. Something that is that fulfilling where you help someone in this area you help give them back their health, reclaim that birthright. And they kind of look at you with this sparkle in their eye. And it's like, you, you they don't even have to say thank you. You feel it. You feel their immense gratitude. And you feel like you're a superhero. You feel like, look what I did. Oh my God, like I am a superhero. That's fun. That is so fun. And so with that in mind, can we help people? We have, we sure have. We've helped ourselves and then we've gone and we've turned around and, and done the right thing and helped others. And that's all we hope to continue to do. And it's enough. And money, money will be there. It'll continue to be there, it always is. Uh, money is just, it's just energy. It's just energy exchanged for value provided. That's it, that's it. And guess what? Do you have to have money, 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 money to motivate people? <sighs> I don't care. I just don't care. Because when people focus on the money and they say, I'm going to show everybody the money. I'm going to show everybody the money before they even try the product. Money, 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 money. Sorry, but that's going to go by the... That's going to go away. It's going to have to. 
so many things that don't serve humankind over the you know centuries has gone away naturally so many things are going away so many things will continue to go away um, this industry can be a very good thing but the minute that the focus becomes purely on marketing and money you've lost your way and it ain't gonna happen for you it's not gonna cut it there will not be sustainability which I hope that's what we all want. That's what I want. I want the people who I help today, I want them to be around a year from now. I want them to be around two years from now. And if they're not, why aren't they? Do they not see value in what I offered? Do they not see continued value in, in the lifestyle? Then if not, then I have to start asking myself what needs to change? Where do I need to be, improve? What other you know, things do we need to employ and, and resources do we need to work with? And we need to, to fill needs. It's that simple. And I'm just so sick of the hype. I'm just so sick of, oh. well, anyway, I won't go there anymore, but all I want to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesse Jamnick, Bob Sivright, Susan Rothman, Heather Sika Leonard, Mel, Adam Sisk. I mean, I could go on and on. Tara Cooper, Lenny Evans, Natasha and Rick. Like, guys, I could keep going. I'll just... <laughs> I just love all. Heather, Rod, uh, I'm going to leave people out, Connie, Bonnie, <laughs> Kimber, um, it's, yeah, Olivier, it, I mean, guys, I can't thank everybody enough, and, I, and I, I'm never going to be able to say everybody's name, but you guys all know who you are, and you're my tribe. Crystal and I love you so much, and we're grateful for you, and if anything, that what this has taught us is that there's a lot of people out there like us. And uh, we're not weird. <laughs> we're not oddballs. Um, there's a lot of people out there like us. There's a lot of people that hope for what we hope for. And there's a lot of people that have decided enough. Time to be brave. Time to start to do the right thing for the right reasons. Time to require what is right. That's where we're coming from. Um, I love you all. Thanks so much.